Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal here, stand-up comic, and we've got a Vanderpump Rules exclusive piece of content to get to you. Tom Sandoval speaks. Of course, he is the center of one of the biggest controversies in reality TV history, and that's not hyperbole, folks. It's a fascinating story. Follow me on Instagram at dneals for stand-up show updates. That's right, Vanderpump Rules has hit its critical point. The producers are cashing in on this controversy. Absolutely wild. Tom Sandoval finally tells his side of the story on the Howie Mandel Does Stuff podcast. Howie Mandel, our favorite Canadian germaphobe here, has never watched the show, so a lot of people in the comments are like, how can you conduct this interview? You can't push back on him if you don't know what's actually going on. Of course, Tom was caught cheating on his longtime girlfriend with a newer lady named Raquel, and he kind of breaks it down. He continuously says these aren't excuses, but of course the audience is kind of feeling like their excuses. Let's all have a listen. Now, we've got four clips. They, they're they all so good. And then the fourth and final clip I'm going to share with you guys is explaining the first kiss, how it happened before a very specific wedding, and why this matters. Have a listen. Anyway, the point is I saw him on that Andy Cohen show. Yeah. How do you feel about what he said? Did you watch? Um. Yeah, I... Uh, I I did not watch it. I I sort of heard what he, what he said, and um, you know I I th I think I, I I'm I can't be mad at what he said. I mean there were a lot of uh, accuracies of things that he said. You know, um, this whole situation has been just. I I mean obviously I've never experienced anything like it in my life. Um, it's it's just crazy how big this story has gotten for for who I am like I'm not like royal family you know I, I'm on a reality show I mean like it, it's Snooki as an affair with like you know whoever it's like is that going to be like national news like that's my question. If it's juicy enough, I guess it would. And uh, some of the comments on the Reddit threads about this are saying, reminder to Tom Sandoval, you can grow apart and break up with someone rather than humiliating him. Of course, Tom Sandoval's, uh, most of his uh, commentary that's going to happen here in the podcast really comes from him f not feeling the maybe physical or sexual connection. Uh, and that's why he cheated. You know, I've finally finally i mean it's been what like almost six weeks now since this all went down i'm finally like getting time to start to reflect on this situation because i never thought i would get myself in a situation like this never dreamed it ever i mean i worked too hard for my image for my businesses like for my integrity and and everything you know um, and maybe that's why, and maybe that's why it's so nasty because he let this cheating scandal kind of go on for so long before he finally, I don't know, you know, it finally kind of hit its apex and it all blew up in his face. But it's like, this is, I live in Los Angeles, guys. This is so LA. Like you work so hard for your image. Just be a good person. Just be a good person. Want to like, do here he is uh, talking about how he tried to break up with Ariana in the past. That anymore. I don't want to. Schwartz had said too that you had tried to break up with her a number of times and it wouldn't happen or that at least you told him that's what you were trying to do that you tried to break up with her multiple times and that you weren't able to I so when this whole this whole Raquel thing came along you know I was in a very dark place in my life um and I love and, how he calls it a Raquel thing this whole Raquel thing you know the scandal that tarnished your legacy and uh it just she it just happened at like the worst i don't know in a way now like maybe hopefully i can look back maybe best time ever but like the worst time ever because you know i was in such a place just yearning for like a connection and raquel and i had become you know slowly you know especially after her and james broke up like really really good friends like confiding in each other a source of like strength a source of like um you know like two let me tell you something as well is that like when you're in a relationship where you don't have a connection and you're very different people and like we go to somewhere we go somewhere and she goes off with her friends I go off with my friends you know and whatever you know there started to build resentment in the relationship my confidence was zapped I mean my my sexual like like the, the, your sexual experience would be with me would be equivalent to like 
you know, a, a 19 year old, maybe his second time, you know what I mean? So like, he's, you know, talking about that distance he feels, you know, in the relationship and, uh, all right, fine. Yeah. But you know, in the end, whether or not the relationship was in the outs, it's, it's kind of like giving a lot of emotional cheating the way he talks about, he could have confided with Raquel. I think that's sort of the, you know, when you talk about flying too close to the sun, the old Greek mythology there, it seems like he was flying too close to the sun. And then when given the opportunity, that tension he had built up finally uh, reached the, the critical point where the physical cheating took place. It definitely uh, started pulling away. Um, and we, I don't want to, I don't want to say negative things about Ariana, but, but. She, she is, she <laughs> but she can be at time like look i have my things don't don't get me wrong i definitely have my things um this is why a pr person just tells you not to do these interviews you know what i mean you just like what do they tell you when you hit rock, bo rock bottom stop digging is that a, is that the thing by the way this is like these are not excuses as to what i did like what i did was completely wrong and totally fucked up Good. and i and i so this is this i'm just i just trying to give you guys like reasoning behind context context exactly and look i i and then they're gonna go to an ad break and we'll fast forward here i actually appreciate that he is telling his story and is saying these aren't excuses i think it's valuable that he i mean it might not be good for his pr like he might not win anyone over but i think it is valuable that he does explain what got him to the point where what he did that was wrong. Like why he did that. That's good. You know, we, we, we can, I think, I think everyone who's following the story understands that that's doesn't make it right, but it's still interesting. Although whenever he explains any of it, it's hard not to hear him placing blame elsewhere. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. And if you enjoy this content, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going anywhere with this story. I'm going to be covering it. I'm getting caught up on all the news here. I know I'm late to the party. Like I said, I normally cover Bachelor Nation news. I've been covering Love is Blind. Anything with a good parasocial story arc like this one where we've got behind the scenes this and text messages leaked and Instagram statements, we will be here for it. Subscribe for daily content. Also, I also have the podcast if you like audio only back bachelorrushhour.com Kenny all right let's check this out um last clip so as like Raquel and I became really good friends like and you know she's single and Schwartz is single like I I was I was like I thought she was so awesome like getting to know her like she's so kind she's like smart she's witty she's fun she's like she's like a, she's, she's hot she's down for it she's yeah she's hot. beautiful um, and I was like, is that wrong? I, I remember I was sitting there and I was like, Schwartz, dude, like even before we started filming, I was like, dude, what do you, what's like, what do you think of Raquel, dude? She's freaking awesome. He's like, yeah, she's all right. I was like, dude, you're like, you're an idiot. Like, she's fucking amazing. Like, come on, dude. Like, and I kept trying to push like Schwartz and her to like, were you pushing Schwartz and her together to like put up a boundary for you? Is no, that, no, no, no. I literally I don't was, mean to like hide you. I mean like no. so that you would, if she was with Schwartz, then you wouldn't- Were you, you cock blocking wouldn't, yourself? Yeah, were you cock said. blocking no, yourself? No, no. In my opinion, I was like, I was like, hey, like if Schwartz and her start dating, then like we can all like hang out even more. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I just liked, I, we became really good friends, like really good friends and I guess like Schwartz was just like, nah, I'm not into it. Nah, I'm not into it. And I'm like, dude, okay, whatever. You're you're dumb. Like, because obviously I I thought very highly of her. And you know, when we finally like we were hanging out and just talking, like we had we had hung out like two nights or whatever, like one night and then like a couple nights later we hung out again. And like we literally talked till like the sun came up the first night with like my friend Brett. It was like the guy, like if you watch the show, it was the guy's night at the Mondrian. And then um, it was like see you next Tuesday or whatever. And then we we're back at my house and we was just like talking. I'm just, I'm locked out of my house. And we just like, we, we kissed. Like we were like, we would, we, it was like magnetic. Like we were talking, moving like closer, like just like as we were talking, like as time went on, it's like we would just start talking closer and closer. Why were you talking closer and closer? <laughs> you know, uh, this is just someone who was like really trying to burn his hand on the top of that stove. And then all of a sudden it's just like, we're like hissing. And it's like, I felt something that I hadn't felt 
in so long, like emotionally. Like, All right, so her phone sorry. goes off. Let's Were face you yes. upset then? Because at Sheena's wedding, Tom then did make a move oh. and they did kiss. So oh. you hooked up before. Who is yes. who's Sheena? She <laughs> Sheena? <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't know who she I'll is. get. I'll get to it. I'll get. But, to but it. the, the yeah. question was: had up until this time where uh, sparks flew, you know, and you were just friends, was there times where you sat down? Yes. And said, I, "I don't know that this is working." Or I got to a point. I think it was like a year prior that I kind of drew a line, because um, Ariana had like oh. Look, she she doesn't like when, when you do something wrong and you apologize. She thinks that means nothing because if you do it again, then it's like you're not even really sorry. I agree with that. I say that to <laughs> what, my you, husband you, all the time. If you do it again. Well, I'm saying like. Apologies mean nothing. She wants action. All right, right? So we're 24 minutes in and it's the first pushback from Howie Mandel. All right. We'll let this go another minute. But of course, you can go check out the full conversation. And I'm just, I'm just I've just been screen grabbing some of your comments. It's absolutely wild. Uh, the fact that they are talking about how commendable it is that uh, he's opening up about his mental health is so gross. He is shaming Ariana for struggling with her mental health while simultaneously blaming her for his. He's using mental health as a way to avoid accountability. There's nothing commendable about that. Someone else said, I am so grossed out by him flippantly saying Ariana trusted me, I guess, in regards to how she no saw or noticed things but didn't connect the dots. And also on Twitter, we've got, and, uh, and let, let me know if I didn't hear, uh, Vanderpump Rules, uh, uh, one of the Twitter accounts, at Sir underscore Rules, said Sandoval confirms that he and Raquel had sex prior to Sheena's wedding in Mexico. I didn't hear that he confirmed they had sex. I heard he confirmed that they kissed. But let me know if I'm missing something here. Of course, the interview goes on and on. There's so much more to share. Let's keep on playing this. Just one or two more minutes, and you can go watch the full thing. Yeah, yeah. and oh, okay. I would, I would, but I would, I would acknowledge her feelings and mm -hmm. respect them in the sense. So I'd be like, okay, I know that bothers you. I'm sorry that that bothers you. I didn't mean to offend you by coming home a little later tonight or oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, It's more like that. Like, like I'm sorry for, 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 for you staying up and all that shit. Like, I didn't mean anything personal. It's not malicious or anything. Ariana would just never apologize, ever. Like, literally, you can count on, like, like, and she has a very, it's one of her biggest strengths. Her, like, her, she, you know, doesn't, give up in any kind of argument. <laughs> he's like a, uh, he'd be great at interviews at a job. Tell me your greatest strength. He's like literally, he, he slams her, says she's stubborn and never apologizing. He goes, it's actually her biggest strength. She never gives up in an argument. All right, folks, let me know what you guys think. Hit the subscribe button. I'm going to have more content coming to you guys tomorrow. A little late in the day today, but I wanted to start on this podcast. I'm going to go listen to the rest of it. Take some more take some more notes. One thing is true that we know right now. Tom Sandoval is not royalty. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. And also, if you want to put some bread in the tip jar, you can go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal and check out our behind the scenes commentary. And we actually have the preview for the next episode of Vanderpump Rules on the Bachelor Rush Hour podcast, bachelorrushhour.com. That is live right now. Click the link in the description to go check that out. And we'll be back with more content tomorrow.